Tafadol, uh, Professor Datuk uh, Rahmat. Thank you, Mr. Lokman Sharif Elias, for the very kind introduction in this webinar. I would like to acknowledge the presence of uh, Excellency Mr. Amar Hijazi, the Assistant Minister of Multilateral Affairs, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, State of Palestine, Excellency Mr. Walid Asaf, Minister and Chairman of the Palestinian Authority Commission on Apartheid Wall and Colonization Resistance, Excellency Mr. Walid Abwali, Ambassador of the State of Palestine to Malaysia, Professor Dr. Mutaz Kafisha, Professor in Hebron University, and my friend in Malaysia, Mr. Azril Mahmani. Let me at the outset uh, express my gratitude to the organizer of this webinar, my AXA Foundation, for inviting me as a panelist in this very important webinar. And uh, I am very humble in the presence of very eminent and distinguished speakers to speak on the topic entitled the impact of ICC decision in recognizing Palestine's state. A topic of great importance, not only to the Palestinian, but the international community at large, for and against Palestine being bestowed as a statehood under international law. And I must therefore con congratulate the host, my AXA Foundation for hosting this webinar. And we have witnessed the pivotal role played by my AXA in ensuring the successful ruling of the pre-trial chambers of ICC in favor of Palestine Assembly and the other Malaysia NGO that has worked together with my AXA is of course Centra, whose team has worked tirelessly in promoting human rights issues in Palestine. Your great effort has now come to fruition as 5th February 2021 saw the historical move, as mentioned by colleagues, that the pretrial chambers of ICC rule that it has jurisdiction over the situation in the occupied Palestinian territories and paving the way for the tribunal to open a war crime investigation. Indeed, the recent decision of ICC is seen to be the beginning of a new chapter for the Palestine, Palestinian to celebrate and rejoice, perhaps, after decades of human suffering and, and sorrows, and finally, we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. And uh, decades of Israel occupying West Bank and Gaza Strip, where international community has witnessed at least five categories of major violation of international human rights and humanitarian law reported by international authority in the light of United Nations. Unlawful killings, forced displacement, abusive detention, the closure of Gaza Strip and other unjustified restrictions on movement and the development of settlement along with the accompanying discriminatory policies that disadvantage Palestinian. My, my former organization, the Asian African Legal Consultative Organization, where I was the Secretary General for, the, for, the, for eight years, we actually followed the development closely as regard to the serious violation of war crime, genocide, and crime against humanity against Palestinians by Israel for many years. In fact, we have in fact made a study, research on statehood of Palestine in 2012. And, and our conclusion, of course, uh, with so many uh, countries of the member state of al had in fact, uh, in consensus, agreed that Palestine is, of course, a state under international law. Now, the International Criminal Court of the Rome Statute guarantees no impunity for the perpetrator of crime against, against crime against humanity, war crimes, and genocide. 
it is with this guarantee that leads Palestine to finally embrace the Rome Statute of ICC in 2015. The government of Palestine launched a declaration under Article 12, Clause 3 of the Rome Statute, accepting the jurisdiction of the ICC over alleged crime committed in the occupied Palestinian territory, including East Jerusalem since June 13, 2014. The government of Palestine then acceded to the Rome Statute and the Rome Statute entered the force on 1st April 2015. Now, as a lawyer, perhaps I would like to again uh, repeat what has been mentioned by Mr. Lokman as regard to the decision of the pretrial chambers of 5th February 2021. Now, we know that all, all of us being notified and acknowledged that the, that the chambers found the, that Palestine had followed the accession procedure in accordance with the Rome Statute, with the Secretary General of the UN who in turn accepted it, guided by the determination that the General Assembly has accepted Palestine as a non-member observer state in the UN. Now, as for the substantive question of Palestine eligibility as a state under the Rome Statute itself, the Chamber held that the only manner of challenging the, automat the automatic entry into force of the statute for an exceeding state party is through the settlement of a dispute by the Assembly of State Parties. As the Chamber noted, no state parties had brought such a dispute under Article 119 plus 2, the relevant of the provision of the statute, Palestine accession to the Rome Statute without any such challenge settled the issue of territorial jurisdiction according to the Chamber. And uh, accession itself constitutes acceptance of the territorial jurisdiction of the court. The state which become a party to the statute never accept the jurisdiction of the court. Now, the pretrial chambers concluded that for the purposes of territorial jurisdiction, state has no meaning other than state party. Hence, the decision was that there is no need for a determination as whether that entity fulfill the prerequisite of statehood under general international law. This is something that I thought, you know, when we made that presentation, MXQA, we mentioned not only state party as, as far as the Rome Statute is concerned, we also put another argument that uh, Palestine is a state under international law, but this has been such that uh, this issue is, is not being discussed uh, by, by the court, uh, perhaps uh, for, for not wanting to, to go into political uh, consequence of, of, of the decision and therefore confine the decision as far as Rome Statute is concerned. Now, let us reflect on the impact of the ICC decision. Of course, the decision is, is a meaningful step towards ensuring that no country is left without accountability for their crime against humanity. You can say that Israel can be held accountable for the crime committed in the Palestinian territories. And those responsible for the, for the crimes are identified. It should stop Israel to use excessive and disproportionate force against Palestine, Palestinians. And that the prosecutor can now open a formal investigation. This means that the ICC could take forward a case against any party deemed to have potentially committed war crime in Palestine. So it is a criminal court. So its investigation are not against state, but against individual suspected of criminal behavior. More importantly, sovereign immunity does not apply in ICC cases. So the aid of state, aid of government, vulnerable and open, subject to investigation and 
possibly commit those crimes under ICC. Now, in accordance with the ordinary meaning given to its term in their context and in the light of the object and purpose of the statute, the reference to the state and the territory of which the conduct in question occurred in Article 12 was 2 of the Home Statute must be interpreted as a reference to a state party to the Home Statute. The Chamber found that regardless of its status under general international law, Palestine accession to the statute followed the correct and ordinary procedure and that the Chamber has no authority to challenge and review the outcome of the accession procedure conducted by Assembly of State Parties. Now, this is where I, I thought I would like to, uh, to respond to or, or extend my, my view as regard to how or in, in, in a way why do we expect uh, ICC to discuss the issue on the statehood of Palestine? Perhaps the best way of deciding the case is to limit the scope of Palestine as a state party under the Rome Statute. Whether there is a necessity to, to deliberate the issue of Palestine being a statehood under international, perhaps, we should look at um, that issue in the light of or in a different forum, perhaps, uh, in ICJ for a declaratory opinion to know, perhaps we can discuss this as a matter of uh, moving forward or whether it is not necessary. Maybe I can have the view of my colleague uh, from Palestine on, on this issue. And uh, there is also an issue or the chambers did mention of, of the right of the Palestinian people to self-determination and to independent in the state of Palestine on the Palestinian Dato, territory, yes. Can, can you conclude within, uh, within a minute, Dato? Ye yes, yes, I will, sorry. Uh, well, I, perhaps I would go on to uh, beyond the, the chamber's uh, decision, what is next? As I mentioned, that ruling held accountability to an international authority. Now, will, for example, a military operation against Palestinian be, be on a low scale now? And uh, there are sets of offenses that prosecutor has found reasonable to investigate, which covers uh, past incident uh, offenses concerning Israel, uh, settlement activity in occupied territories. There are crimes under Rome Statute. There is issue using lethal and non-lethal force against unarmed Gazan uh, protesting at a war between Israel and Gaza. The use of force by authorities against non-violent protesters. The challenge is in implementing the core principle of complementarity, the uh, very important element of will, willing and able in preparing the investigation that concerns the national and national courts. So this is another issue uh, that we, we have to Think about and, and how long will the investigation end? There will be challenges as regard to financial and human resources. Uh, these, uh, because Israeli leaders may be investigated for a multitude of violations, there will be longer time uh, uh, needed uh, involving uh, again human resource and, and financial backup. Uh, this include action and the uh, in the 2014 uh, war against Gaza, where two th more than 2,000 Palestinians were killed and 10,000 wounded, and, and this is not very, uh, it's quite complicated because it, it, it can be, there'll be issue of uh, command responsibility. So there is also issue on uh, illegal settlement. Uh, this is also very important, uh, the grave, the, the, because there is, this is a grave, uh, there is a grave breach of Fourth Geneva Convention and, and a war crime under Rome Statute, as a matter of fact. And uh, more than 250 settlements and almost 700,000 settlers proved prove the point. 
So the, the forcible transfer of communities should also be investigated. So it, it requires a lot of time and, and, and of course, uh, human resource and, and finance. And uh, I must say this, uh, in my conclusion, that ICC route is a long journey. Justice may not come instantly. It may come uh, very late. But uh, what is clear is that this may not be likened by or favors by the big powers, but it will certainly infuse the court with greater legitimacy and credibility as it starts to tackle those who have for so long considered themselves above all. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Professor.